I wake up in the morning and I think about how different my life was a few months ago and how much I've had to change my lifestyle since my withdrawal. There is nothing more dehumanizing than laying in bed bloodied in a pile of your own dead skin and then having to clean up after yourself. Living like this always feels like a part of me has died. And I guess in a way, it has. There is not a day that goes by where I'd wish I hadn't taken topical steroids. It all starts with eczema. Now, like most people, I had eczema as a child. And of course, like most people, they tend to grow out of their eczema as they get older. Um, eczema isn't really a thing you can heal from, but it is a thing that you can grow out of because as you get older, your immune system uh, gets stronger and you experience less of the eczema symptoms. Eczema has never really been a hindrance or big part of my life, I would say. Um, I would still get the occasional small rashes around my neck or some parts of my body, but that was only once or twice a year and it would usually go away on its own. But there was this one occasion where I had gone to the doctors and that one day I came in for a checkup, I had an eczema rash. I didn't really think it was a big deal at the time, but he thought it was appropriate to prescribe me some topical steroids for just for whenever I'd have an eczema rash pop up. I had never really been warned or heard of topical steroid withdrawal at the time. Um, it wasn't until recently, about a year ago or something, where this one YouTuber I had been following came out that she had been using topical steroids for pretty much her whole life and how um, extreme her eczema was when she didn't use it. Her video was actually about how her body had developed this tolerance towards the topical steroids and the artificial cortisones that it provided for the body, which basically regulates the body's stress. Since her body was receiving all this artificial cortisone, her body stopped producing it on its own and became reliant on the creams for it, causing her to use more and more of the cream so it would actually work. It got to a point that no matter how much cream she put on, um, the flares wouldn't go away and the topical steroids just stopped working out right. So after a night like tonight where I'm itching myself uncontrollably, um, there's really no way to describe it. It's uh, a bone deep itch, people will usually say. Um, and yeah, there's really no way to describe it. But in the morning, I'll just make myself a dead sea salt bath where I put two to three cups of dead sea salt in a tub and fill it with warm to hot water. And it's probably the only thing that's really soothing on my skin. Um, I don't know how to explain it because getting into the shower or kind of just like rinsing yourself off is extremely painful. But um, getting in one of these like dead sea salt baths, it's feels like nothing at all. Usually I'll just let myself soak in there for about 20-25 minutes and then I'll get out and throw myself into a oversized robe. Um, oversized because it's just breathable for my skin and I tend to find when you're looking at how badly your skin is with um, all these open wounds and these scabs you tend to want to pick at it a little bit especially with how itchy you feel throughout the day. So just by covering it up, it's one less thing for me to worry about. Now, for the main reason I decided to sleep in the basement and on the ground is because it's honestly just easier to clean up, just to vacuum off the ground and vacuum up all my dead skin 
and uh, laundry machines are right here in the basement, so I have easy access and I don't have to bother anyone. I started having eczema patches on places that I've never had eczema before. And because of that, I had to use more of the cream to cover more of the patches. And because the cream works so well, I never really got a chance to think about it. The cream, you're supposed to only use a small about it, probably about a finger's tip worth, because it is so strong and so intense on your skin that um, it is pretty much effective immediately. But my skin had started developing a tolerance towards the steroids to the point that I would have to use an entire tube of the cream within a week or less. It soon started becoming more of a reality and less out of the realms of possibility that I could be addicted to these steroids. These right here are just two supplements I usually take in the morning. I used to take uh, more, like multivitamins, um, probiotics, and uh, collagen. But now I just take uh, vitamin C and uh, fish oil. Because I hear that they're both good for your skin. And um, honestly, I don't even know if they really work. But uh, I, I take them anyway. I also take one of these in the morning. It's uh, an Ensure Plus um, with 75% more protein. These are basically meal replacements for people in the hospital or for older people who can't really eat as much. Um, it has a bunch of protein and uh, nutrients in it, so it's really good for you. I would usually take one of these in the morning because I found out that during my withdrawal, I would lose a bunch of weight and also lose my appetite for a lot of things. I guess it's because my body is trying to detox itself and at the same time it's trying to heal one of the biggest organs in my body, which is my skin. So a lot of that energy is spent. So taking one of these helps me maintain my weight and also gives me a bunch of nutrients. I like getting up early in the morning around six or seven, a little bit before um, the sun comes out and when people start coming out going to work. I can't really go out in the sun too much because it'll just burn my skin um, and dry it out. I also find it to be the perfect time for me to get in some exercise without uh, sweating too much. I heard online that when people go through uh, the withdrawal, it affects their lymphatic system. So I see people try to you know, exercise and try to get the, the blood pumping so that the body can detox a little faster. And because your skin is so dry, it loses its elasticity. And whenever you move, your skin starts to crack everywhere. So I'm treating this kind of like uh, physical therapy, trying to reteach the skin how to be elastic again. It's really nice too, because I find that the only times I'm not itching is when I'm, one, asleep, or taking walks. July 14th was the day I had stopped using topical steroids completely. And the first two months of stopping were the worst months of my life. Um, my body had became extremely inflamed. Um, swelling up, becoming red, and a bunch of areas had become so dry that if it was a joint area and I had moved like my arm or my knees, the dry skin would crack on movement and start bleeding out. So I could barely move. Even getting up or walking would be really painful. At the time, I booked two appointments, one to a dermatologist at Johns Hopkins and one to uh, a new a doctor as I had just turned 21 and had switched doctors. The dermatologist, she basically ignored me and told me that topical steroid withdrawal was not a real thing. 
and that I had been using the, the topical steroids wrong. And I kind of had a feeling that she was going to tell me that I had been using the topical steroids wrong and that I had been using too much of it and kind of abusing it. And what she told me afterwards was that I should be using more of the topical steroids. And after that, she recommended that she prescribe me more topical steroids instead of the, the small tubes. She wanted to give me a big kind of bottled portion of topical steroids to slather on. After the, the dermatologist, I went to get a second opinion from my, my personal doctor. And he somewhat was agreeing with me, but at the same time brought up other news. Something that I never really considered during my withdrawal was um, my, my mental health. Um, when I went to the doctors, he gave me this sheet asking me all these um, questions about my mental state. And I had just racked up enough points to um, be considered depressed. And um, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Um, I'm thinking about my health and this withdrawal, like, all the time, non-stop. Um, I can see it on my skin. I'm looking at my skin all the time. Um, when I'm eating or when I'm drinking, I see the skin flakes fall into my food and I'm, I'm forced to kind of just like reconsume it and um, all the things I enjoy before, like going out, seeing friends, or showering, or little things like washing my hands, it's, it's extremely painful, and I, there's not a time in the day where I'm able to just clear my mind and not think about it. Hey guys, so I wasn't able to get any sleep tonight, and it's a little bit past 3.30 right now, um, in the a.m., trying to be quiet because um, I do live with my family and I'm trying not to wake them up but um, okay so before TSW I used to love cooking um, I would cook things all the time um, but now I've been a little more strict on my diet because some things could trigger a flare um, for me to get into like a, a sort of itching fest things like sugar processed foods or uh, sometimes dairy. Um, I don't know, it varies from person to person. I'm really upset because I really enjoy cooking and it makes me sad that I can't cook as much anymore. Um, and a lot of the foods that I want to eat, like a bunch of junk food and fast foods, um, I can't really eat anymore. So my food palette's kind of uh, limited. Something I like to make every once in a while is uh, curry because it's really easy to make and I just put a bunch of different vegetables in. I usually like to make a big batch of it and just eat it for days. But like I said, it's really hard to cook nowadays because, um, well, as you can see, my fingers here, my fingers are pretty dry and shredded right now. So if I were to use them too much, they would either ooze out or uh, the skin on it would tear. As I was browsing the internet, I had found someone else who had been uh, closely documenting their own TSW journey in detail. So today um, I'm filming exactly one month since I started this topical steroid withdrawal and... This person had been going through this a lot longer than I have and watching her journey made me feel like I wasn't alone. So I reached out to her and asked if we can call and talk about some experiences that we might never be able to share. Do I call you Miss Zen Zainab? Zainab? I'm not really sure how to... Zainab? Zainab, yeah. All right, thank you for um, joining me and everything. Um, do you think you can um, talk about yourself a little bit? Okay, um, so I started documenting my skin journey on Instagram in 2017, I think, yeah. Um, basically I stopped all of my medication to do with eczema because I had been on them for, at the time, 28 years, which is far too long. 
Um, so I started uploading images onto Instagram, updating people how my skin was doing. Once I stopped using the creams, my skin got a lot worse. I was red from like chest up, um, blotchy, swollen, oozing, flaking. And yeah, I was always documenting the journey on YouTube as well with monthly updates. And I've been through all of the stages of TSW. And I think it was about six months into my journey that I started seeing improvements where I wasn't waking up with a red face or without the flaking skin, without my eyes swelling up every morning. Uh, can you describe your first encounter with topical steroid withdrawal? Like, how did you first come across it? Were you ever like warned of it? Um, so I was never warned about TSW from my doctors. It was actually by chance that I found out about it. So I started my YouTube channel, I wanna say 2016, and it was initially about hair and I've had eczema my entire life, so I knew I was going to make a video about eczema eventually. So I put out a video about eczema, um, it came in like three parts, and someone commented on my last video. Her name is Emmy, and she lives in Japan, and she also has eczema. And in her comment, she said, Hi there, your video is so relatable and reminds me of my own upbringing. I was just wondering if you've ever heard of topical steroid addiction. If you, or anyone for that matter, has been using steroids to manage their eczema and it always seems to come back, you definitely want to look into it. As someone who has also suffered with eczema all my life, I finally have the answers I was searching so desperately for. Please feel free to reach out to me. Emmy. Now up until her message, I had no idea what topical steroid withdrawal was. I think from that day that I found out about TSW, that's when I stopped the creams. That was November the 5th, 2017. And that's when I started my journey. I didn't even think how bad it could get. I just carried on. What was your experience when you brought up topical steroid withdrawal with like your doctor or like your dermal? I don't know if you went to a dermatologist. So my experience with discussing TSW with my doctor was not very good. So like I said, I stopped using my creams on November 5th. So because my face was already like so painful after just like 24 hours not using this cream, I went to the doctors to ask for oral steroids because I've heard that a lot of people take oral steroids just to have like a quick fix. I think this is me panicking about my skin. I'm just in a really bad mood. But I'm going away in two days and I just want to be in a better mood for going out. So I don't want to put a dampener on anyone's um, time away but right now I just want to feel like myself again and I don't want to use um, topical steroids anymore because I feel like it doesn't matter how much I use it's not helping mm -hmm. is it very itchy yeah it's like it's burning it should give you a bit of trimovit mm. trimovit has got antifungal antiseptic and steroid and I just thought I literally just told him I don't want to use a steroid cream and he prescribed me trimovate cream <sighs> what else there was a time where I actually had to, I didn't have to cry, but I was brought to tears by my um, appointment with my doctor. And that was the only time he offered something different, which was going to a dermatologist. And again, that appointment with a dermatologist was just as bad. I was in there for two minutes, two minutes, and he started writing me out a prescription. And I had waited about six months for that appointment. So it just seems like they didn't really care. They just bumped me up to someone more senior just to do the same thing. During your journey, how difficult was it for you to kind of like explain your, your topical steroid withdrawal um, thing to everyone, like around your friends or family? I think I'd, the, the best way to explain it to people is that my, my body has become reliant on this drug. I need to withdraw. I think those two words, reliant and withdraw, people understand it. You might um, say it's something like alcoholism or a drug dependency. That's how I kind of described it. And my, my manager was quite shocked at how quick um my symptoms came about like it was like she saw me on friday i was fine and then come monday my face is just a mess um and when people offer you help like say just use this cream or that and you're like it burns and they can't get their head around it why would a cream burn um you're really flaky why don't you have a shower and like scrub it off it hurts and all these things that they won't they won't understand it how did your um topical steroid withdrawal like kind of affect your relationship so I've been with my boyfriend for a really long time and I think before I even started TSW he knew I had eczema 
um, but I guess he's always seen my good skin, like my good steroid um, covered eczema and I, I think he even noticed that my skin was like deteriorating before I stopped. Um, when your skin is burning you don't want like to be touched obviously, hugging, even just clothes, like wearing clothes can be really like irritating so there was a lot of times where I'm just like sitting away from him, wrapped up in a blanket, just like miserable, just little things like that but it, I, I think honestly the, the worst that it does is it just makes you feel very insecure and very miserable and those two things combined in a relationship is, is not nice, especially for your partner to see you being like that, being upset and yeah it's just not nice for them to deal with. I guess everyone comes from a good place and they want to help but it's just a very hard situation because like you said you can't go to the doctors and be like I have this no one believes you so they just they're just leaving you they'll just let you die on this hill but like she's making the wrong decision but you know we've seen so many success stories and we're all waiting to be that success story and I think we will all of us individually will be at least with alcohol and smoking you can blame yourself but with topical steroids who do you blame you're essentially prescribed this by your doctor, someone who you're supposed to go to and trust when you need help. But when nobody's talking about it and doctors aren't looking into it, who do you blame? What is the reason that so many of us are going through this journey? And why don't you know about it? So many of us are suffering in silence, but you've seen my journey and a few others too. I just hope there'll be someone who tells it.